Hello everyone, welcome back to Shimna Study Corner. Today we are going to deal with the chapter Kurg. This is actually the second part of the chapter titled Glimpses of India in your first flight textbook. Speaking about the lesson, this lesson gives us a beautiful insight of the smallest district of Karnataka and its people. The place has an amazing weather throughout the year with enough rain during the monsoon season. The people of Kurg are known to be one of the bravest. Coffee is the main crop grown in this region. A variety of animals can be found here while the place is surrounded by beautiful Brahmagiri hills, islands and Tibetan settlements. Now, let us delve into the lesson. Let us consider the very first paragraph. Midway between Mysore and the coastal town of Mangalore sits a piece of heaven that must have drifted from the kingdom of God. This land of rolling hills is inhabited by a proud race of martial men, beautiful women and wild creatures. So here the author tries to tell us about the location of the place Kurg. Kurg is located between Mysore and Mangalore and the author compares this place to a piece of heaven and he doubts if this place had been detached from the heaven and had drifted to the present position. He compares it to a piece of heaven because of the beauty of the place. He also says that this place is inhabited by a proud race of martial men. Martial men are those men who are related to war or who are trained in martial arts. So he says that this particular place is inhabited by martial men and the women over here are beautiful and along with that there are many wild creatures in this place. Kurk or Kudaga, the smallest district of Karnataka, is home to evergreen rainforests, spices and coffee plantations. Evergreen rainforests cover 30% of this district. During the monsoons, it pours enough to keep many visitors away. The season of joy commences from September and continues till March. The weather is perfect with some showers thrown in for good measure. The air breathes of invigorating coffee. Coffee estates and colonial bungalows stand tucked under the canopies in prime corners. Here, the author states the fact that Kurg is the smallest district of Karnataka. He also tells us that the vegetation of the place consists of evergreen forests, coffee plantations and spice plantations. Nearly 30% of the total land area of this district is covered by evergreen forests. And during the monsoons, there is heavy rain and the season of joy. Here, season of joy refers to those times when the visitors can visit the place and entertain themselves. So this time, this season of joy begins from September and it continues till March. During this time, there is little bit of rain which is quite pleasant. The scent of the invigorating coffee, the meaning of the word invigorating is giving energy, energizing. Okay, so the scent of the invigorating coffee actually fills the air of Kurg. One can find many coffee estates and colonial bungalows under the canopies of trees. Canopy here means the thick branches with lots of leaves. Okay, so we can find colonial bungalows. Now, colonial bungalows means those bungalows built during the time of colonialism. So, we can find coffee plantations and colonial bungalows in all the important corners of Kurg. Now, let's move on to the next paragraph. The fiercely independent people of Kurg are possibly of Greek or Arabic descent. As one story goes, a part of Alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled here when return became impractical. These people married amongst the locals and their culture is apparent in the martial traditions, marriage and religious rites which are distinct from the Hindu mainstream. The theory of Arab origin draws support from the long black coat with an embroidered waist belt worn by the Kodavus known as Kupia. It resembles the Kufia worn by the Arabs and the Kurds. 
This paragraph speaks about the descent of the people of Kurg. One story says that the people of Kurg were descendants of the Greek and yet another one says that they were descendants of the Arabs. According to the first story, when the soldiers of Alexander's army were unable to go back to Greece, they settled down in this area. They married the local people and their cultures got mixed up. That is the Greek culture and the local culture got mixed up. And this is very evident in the martial tradition, marriages and other religious rites. This is the story behind the Greek descent of Kurgi people. Now, there is yet another proof which tells that the Kurgis actually had an Arab origin. This comes from the kind of dress that they wear. They wear a long black coat with an embroidered waist belt. This outfit is called Kupia in Kurg and it is believed that this dress resembles a dress worn by the Arabs which was named as Kufia. Now let's see the next paragraph. Kurgi homes have a tradition of hospitality and they are more than willing to recount numerous tales of valor related to their sons and fathers. The Kurg regiment is one of the most decorated in the Indian army and the first chief of the Indian army, General Karyapa, was a Kurgi. Even now, Kodavus are the only people in India permitted to carry firearms without a license. This paragraph gives us a clear account of how brave the Kodavus are and how happy their friends and family are to relate these stories to others. There is a reference to General Karyapa who was the first chief of Indian army. He was a Kurgi and that shows how brave Kurgis were. As an honor to their bravery, they are the only category of people who are allowed to carry firearms without possessing a license. The next paragraph goes on to tell us about the exuberant fauna of Kurg. The major river that flows through Kurg is Kaveri. One can see the large fresh water fish named Mahasir in the river Kaveri. We can also see kingfishers and animals like squirrels, langurs, etc. in the forests. Elephants being scrubbed and bathed by their mahouts is also a common sight. On the whole, Kurg is a place with rich fauna. The next paragraph speaks about the variety of sports activities provided by Kurg to its visitors. This includes river rafting, canoeing, rappelling, rock climbing, mountain biking and trekking. It is said that the most laid back or relaxed individuals becomes highly energetic once they reach Kurg and they start trying out these activities. Now let's read the second last paragraph of this chapter. Birds, bees and butterflies are there to give you company. Macaques, Malabar squirrels, langurs and slender lorers keep a watchful eye from the tree canopy. I do, however, prefer to step aside for wild elephants. Earlier, we have already seen a paragraph which dealt with the fauna of Kurg. Now we get to know a little more about the same topic. He says that there are birds, bees and butterflies in Kurg. He also refers to certain animals like macaques, malabar squirrels, langurs and slender lorus. He also mentions that there are wild elephants found in Kurg. Earlier we had talked about tame elephants which were being bathed by their mahouts. So from this we understand that in addition to the tame elephants we can also find wild elephants in the forests of Kurk. Now let's see what the author mentions in the last paragraph. The climb to the Brahmagiri hills brings you into a panoramic view of the entire misty landscape of Kurk. A walk across the rope bridge leads to the 64 acre island of Nisargadma running into Buddhist monks from India's largest Tibetan settlement at nearby Bailakupe is a bonus. The monks in red, ochre, 
and yellow robes are amongst the many surprises that wait to be discovered by visitors searching for the heart and soul of India right here in Kurk. So here in this last paragraph the author introduces to us three different places. They are Brahmagiri Hills, Nisargadma and Bailakupe. What is the speciality about these three places? Firstly, Brahmagiri Hills. As the name goes, it is a hill and he says that once you climb up the Brahmagiri Hills, you get a panoramic view of the entire misty landscape of Kurg. That means you can get an all-inclusive view of Kurg if you climb up the Brahmagiri Hills and when you look from the top of these hills. The next place that the author talks about is Nisargadama. This is an island which has an area of 64 acres. We can reach this particular island by way of a rope bridge. The last and final place he introduces to us is India's largest Tibetan settlement. It's called Bailakupe. He says that we can meet monks, Buddhist monks, who wear red, ochre and yellow colored robes. Ochre is a color, it's a brownish yellow color. So these are the things that we get to see in Kurg if we happen to visit this place. So with this, we come to an end of our video. If you have found this video useful, don't hesitate to tap the like button. Subscribe my channel for more videos like this and definitely don't forget to tap the bell icon for instant notification of all my new uploads. So, it's bye from me till we meet in my next video. See ya!